you will see that uh, Hofeld has some very precise, uh, you know, use of words, okay, and precise way in which he uses those words, okay, and that's very important for us. So yesterday we discussed, okay, that Hofeld uh, was not okay with uh, the word right, you know, uh, being used for all different sorts of legal relations, okay, because all different legal relations do not, uh, you know, are, are not necessarily the relation between rights and duties, okay. There could be other relations as well. So there are other words that we need to use in place of uh, rights, okay, and he uses the word claim right, okay, or right in strict sense, okay, so in order to separate the use of right from other words, other vocabs that he shows us, okay. So that's very important for us and why is it important for us? We discussed that, you know, people uh, talk about many different legal relations and within, with respect to one particular thing, okay, one particular object, when you're talking about right, there could be many different legal relations, okay. So, in order to, you know, save us from all those confusions, okay, in order to help us try understand the different kinds of legal relations that are there, he gives us this different, uh, you know, four different words that I introduced you guys to yesterday, okay, which we broadly in our day-to-day -day lay use, you know, without even knowing, you know, we use the word rights for them, but they are different, okay. And I also told you about you know, what are their correlatives? This is, sorry. Mm, so that's uh, something that we need to look into. Mm, so yeah, I told you that, uh, Ajay, you guys tell me what are the four words I told you about yesterday? Sir, uh, claimed rights. Mm -hmm. The second is liberty. Yes. The third is power. Uh -huh. And the fourth is immunity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct. And the correlative of claimed right is, uh, sir, uh, uh, duty. Mm -hmm. Correlative of liberty is, sir, no right. Mm -hmm. Correlative of power is, sir, liability. Mm -hmm. And correlative of immunity is disability. Okay, okay, okay. Wonderful. So, here's a, I'm trying to use this uh, thing here. I'll use the whiteboard and then see I haven't used this. I will just draw a map uh, to show you guys. Just a second. Let me know if you guys can see this, okay. I need to draw this here. Or I probably need not. Just a second, let me try. Yes, sir, it's visible. Mm, okay. I'm not very good at this. So you probably guessed what I'm writing here. This is also there in there. Oh, sorry.
so I'll be mm, making some more you know I'll be scribbling a little more here but for now I, I are you guys able to sh see it the what you know, the some random letters. Ha, ha, ha. so you see yes. that the R there represents uh, what Hoffel calls right or claim right okay right in the strict sense okay and P stands for privilege or you can also use L there for like you know liberty okay so privilege liberty mean the same thing here okay and then D stands for duty and N smaller stands for no right okay on the right side you see uh, that P stands for power okay I stands for immunity L stands for liability and D stands for disability okay so you see here uh, this relationship if you can see here is what we call the correlatives okay likewise on the other side as well okay so this relationship as you can see here stands for correlative so how do we define correlatives so dual correlatives as you know so certain requirements when we talk about all these relations there has to be two different parties party a party b okay so the legal relation can arise between parties party a and party b even when we talk about the relation in the context of you know one party one but even then we need two parties okay you'll see that in a while okay so you need two parties a relation can only only exist a legal relation can only exist between two different parties okay so these vertical lines okay with arrow marks they represent correlatives okay so the these are known as dual correlatives so what are they okay so what are dual correlatives so hoffel says okay in any legal relation okay in any legal relation between two parties okay between two parties you always need two parties okay in a legal relation concerning a single act okay legal relation has to be with respect to single act or omission remember the content that's what he is referring to okay concerning a single act or omission the presence of one conception okay so we have right and duty here so presence of one conception in one party entails the presence of the correlative in the other party okay so this is very important are you guys also able to scribble there i think i have authorized you to do that please don't uh, scribble there okay uh, so <clears throat> Uh, I hope you guys understood okay what is being said here we are talking about legal relation anybody trying to make changes here please do not scribble there if you have children around please keep them away okay so what we are trying to do here is this that uh, if in any legal relation so we are talking about legal relation it has to be between two different parties okay it has the content has to be one okay concerning single act or omission okay the presence of one conception in one part one party would en entail the presence of okay presence of one concept okay in one party would entail the presence of the other in the other party so here it uh, here how it goes so if I have a right then you have a duty if I have a power then you have uh, sorry if I have privilege then you have no right okay if I have liberty privilege liberty stands for the same thing then you have no right and then if I have power then you have liability and if I have disability no, sorry if I have immunity then you have disability so see how it works okay as I was trying to explain okay it is a legal relationship here okay the correlative that we are talking about it's a legal relation between two parties a B okay 
concerning a single act or omission. Now, what is that? I will explain through examples. Okay, single act or omission. So it might either require you to do something or abstain from doing doing doing, doing something. Okay, the presence of one concept. Okay, so if it is right. Okay, if it is present in A, then the duty will be present in B. So that's the relationship of dual correlatives okay the same goes for all all of them presence of privilege or liberty in a would entail no right in b presence of power in a would entail liability in b presence of immunity in a would entail disability on uh, in b so that's your dual co correlatives now let me explain what these different you know you know terminologies that he uses here okay so He's using, let me put a little C here, okay. So, I'm going to be using this as, uh, you know, right, okay. Uh, uh, so, the word appropriate word here, in order that, you know, for us not to get confused, is to use claim right or right in strict sense, okay. This is the first time logic, okay? So we are not using the right in that broad sense that we've been using so far. So we are not using it in that broad sense now, okay? So that's your claim right, okay? And claim right always has a correlative of duty. Let me give you an example. If I have a right that you pay me rupees 20, okay? So right is remember this okay remember every single word every single comp composition of words that i'm using here very properly i'm going slow if i have a right that you pay me rupees 20 then you have a duty to pay me rupees 20 okay i can use it in another way if i have a right that i'm paid rupees 20 by you then you have a duty to pay me rupees 20 why am i you know using it like this just to convey this okay remember this a right is never to do or not to do something okay a right is never to do or not to do something okay it is the duty bearer who does or doesn't do something okay so if you are the right bearer you are not the one who who is to do or not to do something okay it is the duty bearer who is the one who would either do or abstain from doing something so that's why i'll explain i'll give you the example once more if i have a right that i'm paid rupees 20 by b then b has a duty see the duty is of b b has the duty to pay me rupees 20. the same goes for abstention okay uh, if i have a right that you do not you know trespass into my you know property then b has a duty not to trespass into my property so you can use it you can i mean it's just a you know matter of you know you know how you make the sentence okay so you can you know when you can also use you know i mean this thing probably means the same thing okay uh, act or abstention okay it depends on how you construct sentence but just remember this okay that the doing or abstaining you know that's on the part of the duty bearer not of the one who bears the claim right okay so are you guys with me am i making sense yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Please uh, listen to me very, very carefully because the confusion starts, you know, from now on. I will say this again. If I have a rate, right that you pay me rupees 20, then you have a duty to pay me rupees 20. So right is never to do or not to do something. The right is with respect to someone else doing or not doing. Uh, you know something okay and the legal relation that we have just described here is a dual correlative okay now let's look at the next one okay next correlative relation the next one is privilege or liberty whichever you use okay i will for the sake of clarity i will do this okay 
uh, so um, here you have liberty okay or privilege same thing okay now if i have a privilege okay so unlike right okay privilege or liberty is either to do or not to do something okay unlike right okay so if i have the privilege or liberty to do something you do not have a right with respect to my privilege or the liberty okay so let me explain this okay so for example if i own a landed property one of the incidences okay that i have with respect to my property is my liberty to use my property in whatever the way i want okay that's my liberty to use i say liberty to use because you either do or do not do something okay i didn't say right to use you may in the broad sense use the word right but then you will not be using it in the hofeldian sense that's what i'm saying here so the more appropriate word here would be privilege or liberty okay so an example of liberty of use would be for example i have the right to no sorry the liberty to i was <laughs> using it in the broad sense okay so proper use okay i have the liberty to either walk on the land or not walk on the land okay so i have the liberty now what does what is the most important aspect of liberty okay and that is that is your choice you may either do something or not do something okay so important aspect of liberty is your autonomy your choice your freedom okay you have the choice so if you have freedom of speech for example let's take as an example okay then that does not mean that you have to keep speaking all the time you have the choice to either speak or you do not have the choice to no I, sorry you have the choice to speak or not speak okay so that's what liberty or privilege is all about so if i have freedom of speech that does not mean that i will just keep speaking all the time okay it merely means that i can speak if i wish to i can say what i whatever you know the liberty allows me to so that that's what the idea of privilege or liberty is now how is it related okay how is it correlated with uh, no rights well uh i have a liberty if i have the choice okay that's the content of liberty isn't it that's the essence of that's the crux of uh, liberty that i either choose to do something or not choose to do something okay that's the essence of liberty or privilege okay and that means you have no right that i do not exercise my choice okay so that's how if you had the right that you know i either do or don't do something then you see that i do not have the choice that means i no longer have uh, liberty so liberty is correlative has to be that you do not have a right with respect to it uh, so i hope you guys understood have you understood yes sir ha huh? yes, okay sir. so can ashu give me an example the last part again uh, ashu give me an example of a liberty and differentiate it from uh, right ashura wal yes sir hmm. give me an example of a liberty hmm. i have liberty to speak or not to speak hmm. uh, give me another example hmm. i have to liberty i have liberty to go around or not to go around and other person don't force me so other person don't have right other person G don't have any right I explain that to me explain that to me that's just a simple word it doesn't come as uh, a simple sentence it doesn't convey anything you have to complete the sentence okay so do not say yes immediately i wish i want you guys to listen to me properly because mistakes will be made in the examination and this is where i will not be able to uh, you know consider if you make mistakes okay so listen to sir. this okay listen sir. then yeah yeah so can we make a example here like this so that if we have a liberty mm -hmm. like uh, like here we talk about arrest and detention mm -hmm. so if we are uh, if we are given liberty like for just to speak somewhere mm -hmm. say so it's my liberty i can speak anywhere mm -hmm. 
I, I'm not speaking from the right uh, from the perspective of the right to speak, but just if I have a liberty to speak. Mm-hmm. So, so the the other person, the authority, would have no right against me to arrest me. No, no. Let's not confuse this. If you if you remembered yesterday, I used the word arrest in a very uh, different sense. Okay, so we we will we will connect these two. Uh, but in a while, okay. We will connect these two, but in a while. So, sir. Yeah. Sir, can I come up with an example? Yeah, yeah. To definitely. Definitely. Between right and liberty. Ah, definitely. Sir, uh, according to me, uh, as far as I have understood, sir, right is unidirectional. Means, sir, yeah, if I have a right, mm-hmm. then someone else has a duty. Means that uh, the duty part is optional. With mm-hmm. sir. No. Uh, how is how is duty optional? Because if you have a right, the other one definitely has a duty. There is no question of option there. Sir, I am saying that if mm-hmm. I have a right, mm-hmm. sir, uh, to, sir. Yes, yes. Use it in a proper sir. way. That's what I'm trying to do. Sir, I'm using the word optional in a way that, sir, uh, to do or not do something from the point of duty. Yeah, so use proper sentence. That's what I'm saying. Give me examples sir, and then I will understand. Sir, you can continue, sir. Actually, I'm not able to. So, see, this is what I started with. Okay, let's not go into arrest and all that. Danish, I will address your question as well. But I will address after after a while. Once I deal with power and other legal relations as well. Okay. Okay, sir. So, um, see, I told you that um, right is not to do or is not in not about the right bearer doing or not doing something okay it's about the duty bearer the content here is with respect to the duty bearer so in the strict sense okay in the strict sense of claim right okay as hopeful uses okay your right there is no so it doesn't make sense in in that way to say that i have a right to speak okay you have a liberty to speak Okay, now when I say that you have a liberty to speak, okay, there might be a right associated with that liberty, okay, that your your liberty to speak comes associated with a right that protects it, okay, your liberty to speak, okay, comes associated with a right that protects it, but these two are not the same thing, okay. The essence of liberty is that you have a choice. It does not compel you, okay, to either speak or not speak, okay. That's the essence of liberty, that you exercise a choice, okay. So, with respect to the land land exam, in example that I gave you, one of the incidences of having, uh, you know, property would be that you have liberty to use it. Now, one of the ways that you can use it is to walk on it or not walk on it, okay. Now, when I say to use, it's always a liberty because liberty is to do or not to do something. Okay, as opposed to that, you know, different from that, you have right, you know, right that requires that the duty bearer does or does not do something. So I gave you example of you have a right that you are paid something, that you have a right that your book which has been borrowed by your friend is returned back to you, okay? You have a right that the book, okay, certain book is returned back to you by your friend, okay? Then your friend has a duty to return the book back to you. So do you understand who who has the duty to do or not to do something here? It's the duty bearer. Do you see it? Say yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Very easy, yes, sir. okay? Very easy, okay. Let's take an example of liberty, okay. So, for example, you are walking, uh, you know, by the, you know, this, uh, by the bank of river Brahmaputra, and while doing so, you uh, come across, uh, what do you call it? You you see a, you know, a very beauty, beautiful pebble. Or some some shell. Well, you don't find this here, but let's assume you you, you see something there. Okay, and there are you know five friends. Okay, who are walking by the bank of the river. Okay, now I'm just giving you an example. Okay, you all have the liberty to either pick it up or not. 
pick it up. Got the idea? Huh? You have the liberty to pick it up or not pick it up. Okay? What is the right that you have with respect to that pebble? Can you tell me what right that you might be having with respect to that pebble? Or, or whatever, you know, that you have found by the river bank. What could be the right? For now, yes, sir. Uh, for now, Sumit, let me uh, say this. For now, we cannot talk about it in terms of right. Okay, why is it? Because each one of you have the liberty to go and pick it up. Got the idea? Or you may choose not to pick it up. Okay. Now, when I say that you have the liberty to either pick it up or not to pick it, not pick it up, what is the correlative? The correlative would be that others, okay, these others, okay, whosoever, okay, whosoever is the party, but, you know, be it B, okay, whosoever is, it is, okay, you're, you have five friends are there, so maybe B, C, D, E, okay, so B, with respect to you, okay, because it's the legal relation between two parties, okay, does not have the right that you do not pick it up, got the idea, because if B had the right that you do not pick it up, then you do not have the liberty to either pick it up or not pick it up. That's the relationship of liberty and no right. Are you guys with me till now? Yes, sir. Huh? So just understand these examples. I will go into the you know um, other questions that you have raised, but let's be clear with the legal relation first. Okay. So these two exam are examples of Jural correlative. Okay. Uh, now I. Uh, Sir, now, can you repeat the last point? Which one? Tell me. Sir, uh, no, five people walking yeah, so, outside the river. Ha, ha. So I, I told you that, well, you come across something, you know, uh, very nice. Maybe the ring from the Lord of the Ring. Okay. Uh, so you find that very shiny little, you know, ring. Okay. So you have the liberty. To pick it up okay so when I say you have the liberty you can you may either choose to pick it up or you may choose not to pick it up that's the essence of liberty because liberty gives you the choice it gives you the autonomy it gives you the option you are the author of your you know action you have free will that's the under you know underlying idea when we talk about liberty it gives you choice you either you know pick it up or you you do you, you do not pick it up if you either have the compulsion to pick it up or compulsion not to pick it up, then you do not have a choice. That means you do not have liberty. That's what liberty or privilege is all about. Are you guys with me till now? As I'm trying to explain the word liberty to you in the sense that Hopal is talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So now I'll address your question. Uh, Okay, so you see, that's the essence of, okay, do not go into other complicated questions. I will address those as well, but let's first be, you know, clear with the basics. Then we can go into complicated questions. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the case of liberty. Now I said that if I have liberty, then you do not have any right. So that's the idea of no right, okay? You do not have any right, okay? The, because if you had a right now, what right could you possibly have with respect to the ring that we, you know, see by the, you know, river bank? So if you had a right that I do not pick it up, okay, that I do not pick it, pick the, you know, ring up, then do I have a liberty then? Do I have a liberty then? No, sir. Why is that? So because if you are bound, if if anybody is doing his right, then yeah. you are bound to follow it as a duty. As yeah. a duty I'm bound not to pick it up. That's that's the uh, duty yeah. I have then, isn't it? So so if I if I do not have choice, that means I do not have liberty. So that's why liberty and no rights, and that's how liberty and no rights are correlatives. If I have liberty, then you do not have right. Okay. But if you have sir. right, then I do not have liberty. That's the relation. Yes, yes, done. So can we say that liberty comes as a defense for right? If somebody is using his right. Mm -hmm. So if, to negate uh, that point or to as a defense against him, I, I can use liberty as a tool. 
Well, uh, see, uh, I will not go into all that. Okay, I will not go into all that. Okay, now he, yeah, if one, so obviously, so for example, uh, I have a right. What you are saying? Let me try to contextualize. So, for example, if I have a right that you do not trespass into my property, okay, but you have given me the license, okay, okay, you have given me the permission to enter, okay. Now, this permission does not compel me, okay, to either enter or not to enter. The permission means that I could either choose to enter or not choose to enter, okay. So, if I have got the permission, okay, the license from you, okay, what does that mean? Now, I can either choose to enter or not enter, okay. Now, if I enter now, okay, if I enter now, okay, you do not have a right that I do not enter because you have permitted me. So you see, one either ex these two do not exist to get together. So if you have a right that I do not enter, okay, if you have a right that I do not enter, then I do not have the liberty to enter, okay. But if you have given up that right, okay, now you have given me the liberty, okay, that I may either enter or do not or, or not enter, okay. Then you do not have a right that I don't, you know, enter because these two just cannot coexist. So, was I, did I make sense, Danish, for you now? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I mean, you can say no, no problem. I will take like a week if, you know, if required to explain this. Yes, yes, someone else had a question. Uh, sir, so when you are saying that if there's, an, uh, there's a person who has a right to uh, not, if I have a right that somebody else does not enter, mm -hmm. then that person has a duty to not enter. Right. Yes, that's the correlative, obviously. So, but then, sir, so you uh, explained it in terms of liberty and privilege. But you said when the when there is liberty, there is no right. So here's the thing. So you have a landed property. Okay, let me explain this for you. Imagine that you have a beautiful house. Okay, mm, you have a very beautiful lawn. Okay, you do not want people to step on it. Okay. Are you able to visualize okay, visualize it like yes, that? Sir. Okay. Yes. You do not want people to step on your, you know, lawn that you have maintained. Okay. So what's the right that you have? You have a right that people do not, you know, step on your lawn. Okay. It's a case of trespass. Okay. That people do not step on your lawn. Okay. So you have the right that others do or do not do something. Okay. The other person has a duty to not, you know, step. Now, it is very much possible with respect to property because when we talk about, see, we broadly use the word right to property, but there is no such thing called right to property. There are many different, you know, legal relations with respect to property. Okay. So, those are different incidences of property. So, one of the incidences is the matter of claim right that, that we just discussed, that others do not have, others have a duty not to step on the lawn. Okay. That's just one of the inc uh, incidences. Okay. Now, what you can do with respect to this landed property is that, well, someone wants to enter your, you know, uh, lawn, okay. Now, you may permit that person, okay, you may permit that person to enter your lawn, okay. Now, when you permit someone to enter your lawn, see, you have done something, okay, you, you also have the power, okay. So, see, this is why I'm just restricting here. There are other incidences that I have not explained to you. Okay, so you have the power to do different things with respect to the property. Okay, so now, for example, you have, by virtue of exercising that power, you have authorized, okay, you have, I wouldn't say authorized, you have permitted this person to enter the property. When you permit someone to enter the pro property, I'm using the word permit in the sense of liberty, okay. Now, that person has the option either to enter your property or not enter your property. Okay, you have permitted when you are, so for example, when you are giving, given driving license, driving license does not, does not require that you keep driving all the time. Okay, it merely allows you to either drive on, it says that, well, you, this is what you can do. Okay, and you may not do as well. So you have the choice. Okay, so with respect to this example that I was giving you, this permission that you have given to, you know, X, okay. To either enter or not enter once you have given this permission that person has the liberty to either enter or not enter okay now because you have 
because this liberty has now been created okay because this liberty exists you now you now okay no longer have the right that that person uh, does not enter or does enter got the idea because you have okay now that does not mean that subsequently you cannot uh, you know again exercise your power so as to take away that permission i'm not saying that either okay so that is what probably got you confused okay i'm not saying that subsequently you you cannot again exercise your power so as to prohibit that person so it depends in in, in each case as to how that liberty has been created and to what is the you know period for which it has been created all those factors are extraneous we are not go going into all that all that i'm trying to say here is that now that the permission has been given that person may either choose to enter or not choose to enter okay the choice is that person's but as long as that liberty exists okay as long as that liberty that permission has been given okay and until you have cancelled the permission okay till then you do not have a right that the other person either enters or does not enter because that person has the choice to either enter or not to enter got the idea so here's this is what i was trying to explain that if a has liberty then b cannot have right with respect to the same because if b has a right that a either does or doesn't do then a does not have the choice that means a does not have liberty and that's that's the relation so if i have a liberty you have no right okay that's the relation i was trying to explain so am i making sense now yes sir disha you can say no yes. no no sir i got it okay uh, danish uh, i mean does this example clear your uh, in a confusion yes sir huh? yes sir sumit yes sir okay Thank okay you, sir. so you can take any example okay but then you know later on once we complete this topic okay because we use the words in the lessons here and there so i might use the word you know not in this context in other context i might use but then this is the proper you know use as hopeful would tell you in order to remove many legal confusions okay because each of these legal relationships are different okay when you say claim right it entails duty on the part of b when you say liberty it entails it entails uh, no right on the part of b so these are the so we have so far discussed only two claim right and liberty let's jump to the other side okay so the next p stands for power okay and then i stands for immunity now how are these two different from the first two well so power if you remember okay um, when we discussed hla hart's uh, different kinds of rules okay he talks about two different kinds of rules if you remember primary rules of what primary rules of what recognition no primary rules of what i'm saying primary rules of what obligation yes sir primary remember? rules of obligation, obligation. And secondary rules of power ha uh, secondary rules of power okay now yes. the, you see that's something that you need to keep in mind here to understand this okay the primary rules of prop you know uh, obligation okay obligations are in the sense of rights duties and all that okay so though you do not you can't break them down into other okay uh, or should i say they, these are fundamental okay whereas the secondary rules okay that we discussed okay secondary rules of power they are generative they are creative okay so they create legal relations okay so when you exercise power okay when you exercise a power you bring about changes in a legal relation okay you bring about changes in your in a legal relation okay so how does that work okay let's take example so we've been talking about uh, police officers arresting all the time okay now when police officer arrests you okay what is taken away when you are arrested what is taken away liberty your liberty is taken away isn't it in other times you will have liberty. that liberty okay in other times you have that liberty and that liberty is liberty also comes with a protection of rights okay the liberty you have the liberty to walk okay also comes associated with a right that your liberty is not interfered with 
question. Yeah, any question? Okay, so your liberty also comes associated with a right. So if you have a merely a liberty to walk, but it does not come associated with protection of rights, then your liberty could be infringed by anyone, anytime. So even though we conceptually separate them, in practice, in reality, they come together. Okay, they one comes to the protection of others. So if I have a liberty to move around, okay, if I have the liberty to move around, uh, you do not have a right that I do not move around. Okay. But then that's not sufficient. You may nonetheless choose to interfere with my liberty to move around. Okay. Now, unless this liberty comes associated with the protection of right, well, the liberty is for the sake of its name only. Okay. So it comes associated with protection of rights. So what are those? So quite often we say right to freedom of speech. Okay. Right to freedom of speech. What's that? What does that mean? It says you have freedom of speech. Okay. So you can say or not say, but it also comes with the protection of rights okay that your you know freedom be not interfered with okay so let's talk about free movement okay so you have this freedom to move okay it comes uh, associated with the protection of rights okay so you have right to freedom okay of movement okay now the moment the police officer exercises power okay changes the legal relationship with respect to you and what is that now you no longer have uh, the liberty to move around nor does that right exist anymore okay now that's that's the idea of power power brings about changes in others legal relation okay now arrest is not the only case of you know uh, a example of where power is exercised there are many other examples of this as well okay so what could those be so for example with respect to property we've been talking about property quite a while now so as I gave you example of what different incidences could be there with respect to property. So you have liberty to use it, okay, whether you walk, till, grow food, whatever, okay. You have a right that others do not interfere with, with your, you know, liberties, okay, with respect to the property, okay. You also have the power and what is that? You have the power to sell, dispose it of. Do you see? Okay, now sell is not the same thing as use, okay. How is it different? So when you sell your property, you bring bring about changes in legal relationship, okay, as you exercise that power, okay. So you may offer to sell the property for a certain amount of money, okay, whatever it is, okay. You have exercised a power, okay. Now, for example, because you have proposed something, the other party now has the uh, uh, power okay power is quite similar to liberty okay power means that one can either choose to do something choose to exercise the power or not choose to exercise the power okay so when you made some or such offer you exercised your power now the other party has the power to accept or not to accept okay if it is accepted then that part the other party exercised power okay and by virtue of exercise of that power brings about changes in the legal relationship so offer acceptance now you know i'm just giving you an example okay there there could be other legal requirements as well just simple example okay so as you have seen in the examples that i gave you power involves uh, you know making changes in others legal relationship now when i say power what you need to keep in mind i will explain this later on for now i'm not referring to uh, physical power okay i'm not referring to physical power okay you can compel you can physically force someone to either do or not do something okay so i'm not referring to that power okay so keep that in mind it's, it should be very clear it's not the physical power that you can we are talking about the power in the legal sense the power you may have so when the police officer has the power to arrest you or you have the power to sell those are legal powers that i'm talking about okay now what is the correlative for power said liability is the correlative of power okay so when i exercise power you have the liability okay you have the liability so your legal relations are uh, you know changed okay so if i am if i have the power okay then you have you are liable here liable means what your legal relations are you know changed here that's the idea of liability now the fourth one is immunity okay it's quite easy for you to understand now 
Now, what does that mean? Immunity means that uh, others, you know, others do not have the power to bring about changes with respect to you. Okay. So if you have the immunity, then others are disabled from bringing about changes in your legal relations. So that's the example. Okay. Uh, so there, there could be many examples. Okay. So if you, if you have the property, okay, if you have the property, you definitely have the power to sell it okay you also have the immunity that others uh, you know do not sell it okay that's an example so others are disabled from bringing about changes in your legal relation with respect to that property so that would be an example of immunity now there could be many other examples so for example diplomats are immune from you know being arrested okay there are many other you know immunities that exist okay so it simply means that if I have immunity, then you you have disability. Okay, so if I have one, you have the other. So if I have the immunity, then you are you have the disability. So you cannot bring about changes in my legal relation. So all these examples that I just gave you are examples of jural correlatives. So are you guys with me till now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Very simple. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think we uh, do we have time or we are past our time I think we are past our loaded time uh, so I'll do one thing so I will uh, talk about the other relations tomorrow okay so that's it for today then thank you very much thank you for